Hello. This week has been a crazy week. And I'm going to talk about one aspect of it in this video. A recent court ruling that is going to have significant consequences for the cryptocurrency market. So let's get right into it and start discussing exactly what this means. Libri, L-B-R-Y, lost their suit against the SEC. The judge has ruled that the LBC coin is, in fact, a security. Now, the implications of this go to any proof-of-stake asset, and that includes Ripple. Proof of stake means a central holder decides how much gets minted. That also includes the new Ethereum 2.0 merge. These consequences are going to be felt for quite a while because they are going to shape the cryptocurrency market drastically and significantly. Proof of stake is security, period. And now that the SEC has this precedent set, they are going to use it extensively in all future litigation. Proof of work isn't a security, and that's an interesting point of view, but it makes sense. Anybody can become part of the minting process in proof of work, as long as you can afford the equipment. And proof of stake, minting is done only through the validators. Ethereum, for example, requires a minimum of $50,000 to be locked in the validator's account. Right now, 87% of all Ethereum 2.0 is controlled by five machines. Bitcoin, on the other hand, it is global proof of work throughout the whole system. Now, according to Ethereum's own tests, when they ran proof of work and proof of stake side by side, the only difference in saving that proof of stake gave them was two cents in electrical costs. And many of the largest Bitcoin farms in the United States and around the world started switching to alternative energy in 2015, with the largest one fully compliant and off of the grid right now, meaning it's only being sustained by hydroelectric, solar, and wind. Furthermore, proof of work is really distributed computing. And we've had that for decades, so that the costs are directly proportional and spread out over a large way radius of people. SETI at home is probably the most famous distributed computing system there is. The search for extraterrestrial life requires a lot of mathematics. And this company has been doing it for at least 20 years. Where you can run an app on just about anything to aid in that distributed calculation. And that's really the point of why proof of work is the best way. It's the best way because it is truly centralized. And despite all the nonsense, rhetoric, and toxic innuendo that the media likes to proclaim, it's no different environmentally than proof of stake. There isn't any difference in the electrical costs, not when you really look at machine versus machine. Modern hardware is more efficient than older hardware, and that's the true to the point of any processing you do. Whether it's mining Bitcoin, mining Ethereum, validating Ethereum, or validating 
any other proof of stake coin. Whatever the minting process is, really doesn't matter in terms of the level of electricity acquired. Not in the context of the mechanical machinery itself. Now there are exceptions, and those exceptions can become greater than the rule. But right now, with modern technology, that's not a major issue. The biggest issue for this case is the SEC's new ruling and the impact it is going to have on all cryptocurrency in the United States, and that includes all cryptocurrency exchanges. Because if any proof-of-stake coin is now a security, imagine every single exchange in the United States having to register for selling securities. It will pretty much cripple the cryptocurrency market within the United States directly. And that includes all the debit cards and all the other provisions that the market holds. Now, we have yet to see just how far this is going to reach. But we already know from the SEC's own reports and records, they have at least 160 lawsuits waiting. I suspect this ruling just drove those lawsuits into overdrive. And there is going to be a very significant amount of court transactions in the future pushing this very same agenda. It's going to be a wait and see, but I think we're going to see a significant change in the cryptocurrency market and atmosphere as this progresses forward. Whether or not Congress does something is debatable, and I really don't think they will, at least not right away, simply because there is too much interest and support and propping up legacy banking. And this whole argument really goes back to what I said about monetary policy when I talked about the crash of Bitcoin. Having Libri classified as a security clearly shows the monetary policy impact that this has on the cryptocurrency market. Commodities like the stock market gold, silver, they don't have direct interactions in the same way. So they're nowhere as near the problem to deal with. Unlike the debit cards and credit cards that Visa gives out that let you take your Bitcoin, XRP, Stellar Lumens, or whatever you have on a card and take it into a store and buy groceries, coffee, lunch, whatever, you can't do that with gold and silver. You have to sell it to a precious metals dealer and convert it into fiat. That's the process of the commodity versus monetary policy. If cryptocurrency maintained and remained strictly a commodity, we wouldn't be having this discussion at all because it would be treated no different than really stocks. But because of the push to make it a monetary currency for supporting debit cards, credit cards, whatever that nature, we are dealing with the point of a security, the point of legal tender. And that really is going to significantly set the stage moving forward. What's going to happen with U.S. exchanges at this point is going to be very questionable and debatable. We already see from Coinbase and the SEC suing Coinbase for selling unregistered securities. This case is going to give that case a lot more fangs for the SEC. Now that they have established that proof of stake is a security. They have leverage, and that leverage is going to give them a legal stranglehold. Where do we go from here?
I really don't know. I don't know because we don't have enough information yet to see just how this could impact future legislation. We do know the SEC is going to continue to litigate these cases. It has already said so. It has already planned the lawsuits, and now it is just a matter of executing them. All I can say at this point is diversify your holdings and consider an exit position if you don't have one, particularly if you're a United States citizen. If you're not a United States citizen, well, it's business as usual and life goes on through your regulated exchanges. You'll be able to buy and sell all you want until your local jurisdiction changes its laws. But for now, U.S. citizens really need to crack down and pay attention to what this means and how it's going to affect uh, Coinbase, Binance U.S., FTX U.S., Voyager, Circle, uh, M1, Acorn, any public entity that is selling cryptocurrency now is under the microscope or could potentially be under the microscope that the SEC now has their hands on. So We'll see. Let me know what you think is going to happen in this case. Do you think the Supreme Court will overrule it? Because that is a possibility. Do you think that the Congress will actually legislate it so that cryptocurrencies aren't held to this standard? And more importantly, I think the big question that we need to really think about, what happens to us? The people that actually bought it. The people that actually buy and sell cryptocurrency just like you do stocks. Where do we fit in all this? And what are those ramifications going to be? Because the SEC has refused to give any straight answers. And nobody knows. So share your thoughts. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think will be the consequences of this ruling? I'd like to know. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you're not. And thank you for watching. Until next time.